Guys, I'm foaming at the mouth to talk about the salivary glands, all right? They're not just essential for the proper functioning of the digestive system, but they're also essential for maintaining oral health. Today we will delve deep into the salivary gland structure, the cell types, and specifics about the different salivary glands. So first, let's review the cellular components of the salivary glands. So there are three main types that we'll be talking about. They are serous cells, mucous cells, and myoepithelial cells. So first, let's go into serous cells. These cells secrete serous saliva, which contains enzymes like amylase, lipase, and lysozyme. So the amylase and the lipase play important roles in the initial stages of digestion, whereas the lysozyme provide antibacterial properties and inhibit growth of bacteria in the mouth. Now let's move on to the mucus cells. So these cells play a crucial role in the production of mucin, the key component of mucus, and the primary functions of the mucus cells include lubrication, protection, moisturizing, and buffering. Lubrication makes it easier to speak, swallow, and just overall facilitates smooth movement, where mucus acts as a protective barrier by lining the mouth and throat and providing protection against harmful substances like pathogens, chemicals, or abrasive particles. Mucus also helps to prevent dryness and keep tissues hydrated. Finally, mucus contains biocarbonate ions, which help neutralize acids produced by bacteria in the mouth. And now we're on to the myoepithelial cells. Now these are specialized contractile cells that are found in the salivary glands. These cells contract and exert pressure on the secretory units of the salivary glands, thus facilitating saliva release. These cells can also regulate the rate and volume of secretion, ensuring that saliva production meets the body's needs. Finally, myoepithelial cells provide structural support to the secretory units of the salivary glands. So now that we've looked at the cells, let's move on to the five main regions of the salivary glands. So we have the serious acinus. Now the serious acinus is a sac-shaped cavity that is comprised of many serious cells and that produces and secretes saliva. And then we have the mucus acinus. Now the mucus acinus is a sac-shaped cavity that is comprised of many mucus cells and that produces and secretes mucus. And then we have the mixed acinus, and as the name suggests, a mixed acinus contains a mix of both serious and mucus cells. And then we have the intercalated duct. Now the intercalated duct is a region that connects to the acini that serves as a conduit for transporting saliva from the acini of the gland to larger ducts that eventually leads to the oral cavity. The intercalated ducts are lined with a simple cuboidal epithelium which consists of a single layer of epithelial cells. These ducts are named intercalated because they are located between the secretory acini and the larger ducts within the glandular tissue. And then we have the striated duct. Finally, the striated duct serves to modify and process the saliva produced by the glandular acini before it's released into the oral cavity. The term striated refers to the characteristic appearance of the ductal epithelial cells when viewed under a microscope. Now we'll roll on into the three major salivary glands. So these are the parotid, the submandibular, and the sublingual glands. So the parotid gland is the largest of the three major salivary glands, so we'll discuss it first. Located in the retromandibular fossa, inferior to the zygomatic arch and posterior to the masseter, this gland has a superficial and deep lobe that is separated by the facial nerve. The facial nerve does not, however, innervate this gland. Vascular supply to the carotid gland includes the external carotid artery and the retromandibular vein. The parotid gland is supplied by parasympathetic innervation via the glossopharyngeal nerve. The secretions of the parotid gland are serious. Seriously, as the gland contains predominantly serious acini. Note that these serious cells also secrete an A amylase, which is a digestive enzyme causing hydrolysis of carbohydrates. Finally, the duct, which serves as the conduit for saliva between the parotid gland and the oral cavity, is the parotid duct, more commonly known as the Stenson duct. This duct courses from the anterior aspect of the superficial lobe over the masseter and penetrates the buccinator muscle. It opens into the oral cavity near the maxillary second molar. Next is the submandibular gland, and it's the second largest gland, and it's located in the submandibular fossa on the medial aspect of the mandible. This lobe also contains a superficial and deep lobe that is divided by the mylohyoid muscle. Now this is high yield. See that light blue turquoisey? High yield topic. It's divided by the mylohyoid muscle. It's also important to note that this duct is most likely to experience sialolithiasis or salivary gland stones. This is because of a combination of factors, including the composition of saliva, which has a higher concentration of mucin and calcium ions than other salivary glands, also duct anatomy, as the salivary has a longer pathway to travel to the oral cavity, and saliva flow dynamics, as saliva is constantly created and secreted, and thus more likely to accumulate. Important innervation for the submandibular gland is via cranial nerve 7. As mentioned earlier, the saliva produced in the submandibular gland is more viscous than saliva produced in other glands, and this is because the gland contains a mix of both serous and mucus secreting acini. I want to note that the submandibular gland produces most of the saliva in the oral cavity and secretes a combination of A amulus from the serous acini, lysozyme, and mucin. 
Finally, the duct of the submandibular gland is Wharton's duct, which courses around the posterior aspect of the mylohyoid muscle and then superior medially towards the floor of the mouth on either side of the lingual frenulum. Finally, the sublingual gland is the smallest of the major salivary glands. This gland is found on the floor of the oral cavity between the genial hyoid, the hyoglossus, the mylohyoid muscles, and bordered laterally by the mandible. In terms of features, this gland actually contributes minimally to the production of saliva in the oral cavity and lacks striated and intercalated ducts. The innervation is the same as the submandibular gland with cranial nerve 7. This gland is mostly just mucus acini and secretes mucins. Finally, the duct of the sublingual gland is the Bartholin's duct. This duct joins Wharton's duct and drains into the oral cavity by the lingual frenulum. Note that this gland lacks striated and intercalated ducts, so the ducts of the sublingual glands typically open onto the floor of the mouth on either side of the frenulum linguae, which is a small fold of tissue beneath the tongue. These openings allow saliva to be released directly into the oral cavity. So now I know this was a lot, so here's a summary table of the major salivary glands, innervation, secretions, and ducts. So the parotid is innervated by cranial nerve 9, and its secretion is serous, and the duct is stenson. Whereas the submandibular is cranial nerve 7, its secretion is mixed, and the duct is wharton. And for the sublingual salivary gland, the innervation is cranial nerve 7, the secretion is mucus, and the duct is bartholin. Finally, although we have focused primarily on the major salivary glands, minor salivary glands are numerous small glands located throughout the oral cavity, primarily in the submucosal tissue of the oral mucosa. Unlike the major salivary glands, which have ducts that open directly into the oral cavity, the minor salivary glands release their secretions through tiny ducts or directly onto the mucosal surfaces. There are the labial glands, the palatal glands, and the glossopalatine glands, the lingual glands, and then there's also the lingual tonsil glands. So minor salivary glands contribute to the overall production of saliva in the oral cavity and play important roles in maintaining oral health and function. They secrete saliva continuously, which helps to keep the oral mucosa moist, lubricated, and protected. Additionally, saliva produced by the minor salivary glands contain enzymes and antimicrobial components that aid in digestion and protect against oral pathogens. So lastly, we're talking about von Ebner's glands. Now this is a high yield topic, and these are small serous glands located in the lamina propria of the circumvallate and foliate papillae of the tongue. They secrete a serous fluid that contains lipase, which helps in digestion of dietary fats and also plays a role in the cleansing of the taste buds. And now we're moving on to example question one. So the submandibular gland wraps around the posterior edge of which muscle? The mylohyoid, the anterior belly of the digastrict, the posterior belly of the digastrict, the stylohyoid, or the geniohyoid? And if you're listening, you'll know that the correct answer is A, the mylohyoid. So the submandibular gland is the second largest gland, and it is located in the submandibular fossa on the medial aspect of the mandible. This lobe also contains a superficial and deep lobe that is divided by the mylohyoid muscle. This is a high yield topic. And now onto our final example question. Which structure is most associated with dysgusia? Now is it the temporal mandibular joint, the salivary glands, the anterior maxillary canines, the soft palate, or the hard palate? And the answer is B the salivary glands. So dysgusia is a condition characterized by an abnormal or distorted sense of taste. Patients with dysgusia may experience a metallic, bitter, salty, or sweet taste in the mouth, even when there is no corresponding taste stimulus present. This phenomenon can arise as a result of certain medications, systemic health conditions, infections, or nutritional deficiencies. Or it may be a result of more serious health issues if it persists beyond the course of a medication or illness. And that's that. So for this video's summary, let's switch it up a bit and just show the table that summarizes these major glands again. Okay, so the parotid gland is innervated by cranial nerve 9, and that's secreting serous, and the duct is the stenson. Whereas the submandibular gland is innervated by cranial nerve 7, the secretion is mixed, and the duct is wharton, and the sublingual gland is innervated by cranial nerve 7, the secretion is mucus, and the duct is bartholin. Thank you so much.